What's up guys, Julian here today. I'm gonna be talking to you about how to make modern breakbeats. You know, bicep, Frankie Wah, Prospa, Transwax, that style. To go along with this video, I just dropped a new sample pack called Definitive Modern Powerful Breakbeats Volume 1. The link is right in the top of the description. This really helps support me. Plus, you guys get this awesome sample pack. So you can see what this is, is I've got seven breakbeats here, all split into individual layers. I'll put you a few of these as well. here everything's really solid plus you get the full project file for the demo track that you heard in the intro plus you get these free bonus ableton racks my definitive mastering rack and this widening as well as some bonus percussion loops so you got a ton of stuff in here once again this is a great way to support me as well as yourself you know you guys are getting a really solid huge library of sounds here to work with and to build your tracks out of you know there's not a lot of good sounding breakbeat packs on the market, especially right now, and a lot of these styles people haven't really covered. So I wanted to make like just a really solid, ultimate sort of library for that type of stuff. Again, link is right in the top of the description. This really helps support me. It's not that expensive, but you get a really solid collection of breakbeats in the sample pack that will help you take your tracks to the next level. Plus, you get this full demo track project, so it's really like you're getting everything that you need to make a really solid track. Again, really help ke helps keep me going. I don't make a whole lot just off of these YouTube videos, but with these sample packs, I'm able to keep bringing you guys new videos and showing you stuff like this that really isn't out there yet. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Link is at the top of the description. Definitely go grab that, and let's dive in. So, this is actually the project file for one of those break beats that I just played you. And basically, I'm going to use this and just show you, like, all the different layers. So, what I would start with, I think a lot of people think that you're going to start with a break beat. Like, a lot of people think you want to find, like, that and start with that. But actually, when you're making these, the best thing to do is start with, like, a really powerful kick and a really powerful snare. So, if you listen here. And even, like, this little clap, too. Yeah, you know, those are really solid on their own, and they work really well on their own, and there's not a whole lot of, like, yeah, you can hear that, like, they just fit really well together, they're already really punchy on their own, and that's kind of, like, the first key that I think is really important here. You know, a lot of people, again, think that it's all about, like, the breakbeat and the sample, and that is very important, but this is equally as important. If you only have, like, really good breakbeats, and they're just looping them, you know, it's not really going to be that fat. This is how you get that really clean, powerful sounding break beat, is you got to start with the kick and the snare. And if you listen, like, you know, this is just like a fat 909 kick. You know, super punchy. And this is just like a nice punchy. Powerful snare. And they're really good samples on their own. You know, this isn't going to work if you're taking, like, kind of an okay kick and then trying to add a bunch of saturation and compression and make it fatter like you need just like a really solid fat kick and snare and what I recommend doing is just make a simple pattern and then you can change the pattern of the kick and snare once you actually have like your break beats in there right like just start with like the simple drum and bass pattern and then you can go and add the little different kind of variations once you kind of know where you're going so once you have these this is the stage where I would move up to some break beats and I would always start with just one right like so you can see we have this one I chopped this up quite a bit you can see that happening there and you'll notice this doesn't have that much processing on it either. So it kind of goes back to what I was saying with the kick and the snare. Like, a lot of people think, like, you know, you want to spend all this time, like, processing this, and you're going to saturate it, and you're going to compress it, and you're going to try to make it all... Trust me, you don't need any of that. You just want, like, a nice, powerful break beat that already has a really good texture to it. I think that's the key, is that you need to start with that really good texture. Like, don't find something that's, like, weak, and then go and try to fix it, like... 
Take something that already has that kind of texture that you're looking for and put it in your project. I can see this blends really well with the cake and snare. But we don't need to do any like side chaining. I think a lot of people think also like you have to side chain this to your cake and your snare, but trust me, that's just messing it up. Like let it breathe. Let it just play out how it is. And then the kink and the snare. We'll just sit right on top of that. So then we have another breakbeat underneath it. You can see I pitched this one up a lot. And so, yeah, typically you either want like one breakbeat that's kind of filling the whole like frequency spectrum or you could have like two or maybe even three like this. But it's really important to keep in mind that they need to be very different sounding breakbeats. Like this one, a lot more mid-range and low mids, and then this one is up there in the highs. And we even pitched it up to kind of like accentuate that, and then the other one is pitched down a little bit. Because if you just get like two that are really similar to this, you're not really going to get anywhere. It's going to sound just really messy and just like a big cloud of noise. But if you get two that are in two different kind of like frequency ranges, it just comes together as one. And then the key here also is with the chopping, you have to make sure they're playing like, you know, when the snare hits on this one, it also has the hit on this one. Like, you know, if we just take like, you can see like if they're not playing the same pattern, it's gonna get messy. And another tip here, with the pitching is like the warp modes. So you can see for this really high one, I have it on complex. Which is the best if you're going to do that. But then on this one, what I've actually done here is I pitched it down a little bit. And then you can see over here, so we have this on the beats warp mode, which would typically sound a little bit too weird. Like this is like what that would sound like normally. Right? It's a little bit like the warp sounds weird. But if you switch this to preserve transients and then you set this like that you can actually use this little number here as like a transient shaper and what I mean by that is you can essentially make the break be a little bit tighter so here's all the way up and I'll just bring it down It's too bad you can't automate that, but yeah, so that's really useful because you can make this a little bit tighter, a little bit cleaner, and also more modern sounding. I think for these like modern breakbeats, that like really tight, clean sound is important. And it's almost like synthetic, right? Like when you hear it, it's like, how do they take like a, a loop of some drums, of some live drums, and really make it sound this like tight? Well, there you go. It's just some transient shaping. And on the second breakbeat, Processing is also really simple. High pass filter, a little bit of a high end boost. Again, like if you're having to do all that extra processing, you know, it's not, and it's probably because you need to go and just find a better sample to start with. So then from there, I actually have another shaker here. Just for a little bit more highs. And this is really important. If I turn this off and then turn it on, you'll hear the difference. So here's without it. And then with it. Right, so having that like chick -chick 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 in the high end adds a lot of energy. I think that's what people need to realize is like in terms of the frequency spectrum, it's like the lower you go, the more it's focused on like the groove and like kind of the swing and bounce of the track. The higher you go, like something like this that's really, really bright, it's just adding energy. All the energy is in the high end. That's why like when you want a track to be a little bit more exciting all of a sudden, you bring in like a ride sim or something like that. So we got this one here and I'm just high passing it and again like without it and then with it. This is one of those things that can be easy to overlook but it's really important. And also on the topic of things that are easy to overlook that is still really important. This reverb clap. So I'll play this whole beat without it and then with it. So yeah, it's just this nice, like, I think it's like an 808 or 909 clap, something like that. And I just have it going through this distorted reverb. There's the reverb, 
And then we're using overdrive after it. Oh, yeah, this just creates, like, a nice impact, you know? I think if you have that, like, hit there on the second snare every time, like, you get one snare without it and then one snare with it. It makes that second hit, like, really smack. And that's, you know, that's really the only goal of all of this stuff, right? It's like, you know, why do you have, like, a punchy snare? Well, it's because it's going to make it, like, more, like, intense of a groove. And so then same thing here. It's like you're kind of like accentuating and like making certain notes stick out. And that's really going to work well in this. And it's going to really make this feel like <laughs> cohesive, but also exciting. And again, it's really a good way to get out of that just like kind of like, you know, classic sort of like old school breakbeat sound. Because I think, you know, the key with electronic music is like if you're trying to just make like a 90s jungle track, you kind of miss the point, right? It's about, like, creating the future. So it's like, how can we take breakbeats like we've all heard in the past, like we all heard in 2005, in the 90s, whenever you have heard these first, and kind of bring it into the future? Well, here you go. It's by adding little stuff like this reverb clap. And, like, using, like, this, which you may not have been able to do as easily back in the day. You know, to make it really punchy and fat and powerful. And that's the key with all of this stuff. You know, again, it's like we're looking to the future. We're trying to see, like, what is, like, the next level this stuff can go to rather than just, like, ooh, how to make 90s jungle break. Like, that might be fun for a little bit. But, again, like, I really think the key with electronic music, look to the future. If you're looking to the past, you kind of miss the point. So yeah, that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get Definitive Modern Powerful Breakbeats Volume 1 right on top of the description on my fan cam. Again, it's super cheap. Just $10, but you get these seven breakbeats, all with individual layers. So you could go, and you can take these and make your whole own new breakbeats out of these. You know, you could chop them up. You could use, like, the snare from this one, the cake from this one. You can really do a lot with these. And I really just wanted to create, like, a powerful library that you guys could really learn from. And, yeah, just really get a lot of value and take your tracks to the next level and show you some of the stuff you've been missing. Again, I don't really think there's a pack out there like this that sounds as good with these kind of, like, modern, high-quality breakbeats in the style of the artists you guys are always asking me about. So, again, link is on top of the description. Definitely go support that. Plus, you get the bonus Ableton racks, the bonus percussion loops, and the project file for the demo track. So you get a ton of great stuff. It helps support me, but most importantly, it's going to help support you, take your career to the next level, and make the music you've always dreamed of, and get where you've always dreamed of getting. Thank you so much for all the support, guys, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.